There you go. Mm -hmm. You're live. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> just want to give it a second and make sure that I'm in a right live. If anybody can just send me a message and let me know that I'm actually doing the right thing right now, that'd be awesome for me. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is the right place to be. All right. So thank you guys. So sorry for um, not being able to get this right. Lately, I've been just doing lives on uh, Instagram and it's just been a little bit uh, easier for me. But um, so perfect. I'm uh, glad all of you guys are here. I uh, just want to introduce myself to you first. I'm Travis Daniels. I'm the owner of uh, Travis Daniels Photography. Um, before I was a wedding photographer, I played eight years in the NFL, and now we're running a, a, a pretty successful wedding business. Uh, we're photographing about 60 plus weddings um, all over the world, but mainly in South Florida. You know, we get to travel out to New York, Jamaica, uh, different things like that. Um, it's been a really interesting ride, you know, <clears throat> because my background is first football. So a lot of people always ask the question like, man, how did you get into wedding photography coming from playing professional sports? Uh, and how are they like similar, you know, because they seem like they're like so far apart from what you used to do. But to be honest, weddings and football go hand in hand. You're always dealing with new people. Every year on a football team, you got new people. You're always dealing with a sudden change. In football games, it's fumbles and interceptions. In wedding days, it's weather, it's the dress malfunction, it's some kind of delay. So being able to be able to adjust really fast on the fly, I think that really has helped me out a lot uh, moving forward, like with weddings. Um, one thing that I, I must say is I want to talk to you guys about like planners, like the photographer planner uh, relationship. Uh, me, I definitely value uh, my relationships with all of the planners. I think that every bride should definitely have a planner and every planner should definitely communicate with the photographer as much as possible. You know, this way everybody is on the same page and we're able to execute, making sure that the bride has the best possible wedding memories. Um, me, I'm really hands-on, especially when it comes to that timeline. Timelines to me are like essential to making sure that everything is run, uh, you know, a core. When you think about the planning process for the planner and the bride, you guys have been planning sometimes a year, even further out or, you know, less than a year. But what all of that said is you guys are spending so much time you know, coming up with the concept of the wedding, the flower, the color palette, the guest list, the seating chart, you know, like all of those things. So when it comes to the actual wedding day, as a photographer, I want to make sure that I'm delivering for you and make sure that you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, kind of micromanaging uh, what, what we are doing, you know, because we want to take as much off of your plate as possible. So when it comes to the timeline, Definitely work really good with the photographer, you know, about it and get his suggestions on the timeline because every photographer is going to work completely different from like the previous people you probably used to working with or the last photographer you was with. For myself, we run things on a 10 hour scale. Like I don't have any collections that are like six hours or eight hours. We want to do the, the whole 10 and sometimes we might even do more because we want to actually cover the entire wedding day. Being in this industry, we all understand that everything don't always go as planned. Sometimes the wedding start a little bit late. And if you have like those, if the photographers have coverages that are less than uh, a good amount of time, 
you could be doing speeches and that coverage is up, you know? So getting back to the timeline, we like to spend like an hour to hour and a half with the guys get, doing those getting ready photos. Uh, we like to spend two hours with the bride uh, doing those getting ready photos. You know, this way we have enough time to make sure that we're getting all of the different shots. So even though I tell the groom, you know, we're gonna start at one or 12 or, or whatever that time is, we're always showing up probably 30 to 45 minutes earlier so we can get the ball rolling, you know, get the guys uh, moving. Um, it's really important that we are in communication about the timeline because, you know, you may be used to working with a photographer that needs only 25 minutes to get the job done because of the way that they go about it. But for myself, like and for other photographers like myself that like to take time and spend the spend a good amount of time telling that story, getting those detailed shots and moving on to getting ready shots and getting shots of all of the groomsmen individually as a, as well as like group shots. I mean, bar shots, uh, whatever the hotel offer, just getting those shots. Sometimes 20 minutes, 30 minutes is, is not going to cut it. So we definitely always are doing like an hour to hour and a half um, with that. Uh, when we come to the bridal suite, it's really important that the bride for us is ready when we come in there. Ready meaning hair and makeup. Being that we're going to be there for two hours, which seems like a long time, but on a wedding day, things are moving like so quick. And if we come in a room and the bride isn't ready for like an hour or 45 minutes, you can just imagine how many photos she do not get to take because we just don't have the time to actually make it happen, right? So having a planner that's going to have either she's he or she is going to be there or having one of the assistants there doing the hair and makeup process is a really big help for the photographers because when they come into the room, everything is pretty much set and ready to go. Another thing that I always tell every bride is when we come in a room, you want to already have all of the details, like your, your shoes, your rings, garters, bracelets, invitations, any of those things, just kind of have them in like one area. You don't have to try to make it look nice or fancy, anything like that. We'll take care of that part. But if you have it there, we can come in, you can tell us where it is, and we can just go and get right to it as opposed to breaking the flow up of, of anything that's happening. Uh, so I think that most photographers are probably going to spend 10 minutes max, you know, shooting details, different uh, crops or adding in different pieces so that they can kind of photograph all of the things. So that goes into now we need the bride ready so we can get those makeup shots. Me, we don't like to take pictures of brides with like, you know, a streak of makeup here and here because most people don't really use those photos for anything. So when we come in, we want the face pretty much completely done. This way, every photo come out of the camera is looking great. And your confidence is definitely gonna be building up because you're gonna see how great you, you're looking. And we, we haven't even got started yet. So being on time, making sure that the brides are on time to get those shots. Now we can move into getting shots with her body dress, holding the dress, her shoes, you know, nice, cute shots in the bed, you know, different things like that. Um, I always stress to everybody is that we all have like a, a job to do. Everybody is counting on the next person so that we can make sure that the client's wedding memories is perfect um, or as close to perfect as, you know, time goes on. Uh, one thing that I, I like to tell clients, too, is that, you know, sometimes last year uh, you probably went out to a restaurant and you probably didn't get the best service. If, if that happened to you, you probably don't remember the lipstick you was wearing, the clothes, the day of the week, or perfume, things like that. But when it comes down to the actual wedding day, you're going to remember every detail about it. So it is really important that myself, hair and makeup, the planner, the pastor, everybody is working on the same page to execute. So if hair, if the hairstylist is going first, he or she need to be done so that makeup can start. Makeup need to start on time so 
photography can start on time. Photography, photographers, we need to be done so that she can get into the limo to get to the venue. The passes need to be on time so that cocktail hour can start on time. Like everything counts, every second counts. And for us in the industry, we always have another opportunity. Sometimes people are doing three events in a, in a weekend or you're doing a wedding this week, next week, you know? So we always get to do it again. But when it comes to the client, they only get today and that's it. So I'm always like stressing to, to them about the time. Any client that I ever had, every time we speak, I lead off with that because no matter how nice a photographer can make photos look, if he don't have to, he or she don't have time, there's no time to take the photos. So you want to make sure that you're on time. Um, another thing too is your bridal party, right? I'll, I talk to clients about bridal party. You know, you want to try not to get into the situation where people are like just being obligated to choose these certain people, you know, as opposed to choosing people that are going to represent you the way that you want, want to be represented on your wedding day. You know, having some clients sometimes have bridesmaids that when we're doing like group shots, they're like bickering about who go on, on what side, when really the focus of this picture is the person in the middle, you know? So that's another like nugget, I guess I would like throw out there. For if any bride is on here or any groom or anybody that knows somebody that's about to get married, you know, talk to them about the bridal party. I mean, I didn't seen it all. I didn't seen brides have like full on panic attacks, you know, and just leave us like wondering, like, how are we going to recover from this? You know, but luckily in that situation, we were uh, able to. Um, I definitely want to take some questions from anybody. Um, on here that may have any questions uh, to ask uh, that they're curious about, you know, for myself or just about the, the business uh, in general. Um, when it comes to like those family formals, so we're going to walk through like a actual wedding day. So we, we already discussed about the ceremony. I mean, the getting ready part. Now we're moving into the ceremony. Photographers, I think is like really important that you talk to the planner because she may want, he or she may want certain decor shots when it comes to the ceremony space. So one thing that we try our best to do is we allot like at least an hour and 15 minutes in between the time that photos stop to the time that actual ceremony stop. This way, that, this way we can get to the venue or the church and be able to take a couple shots of the setup of the church without anybody uh, inside it. Sometimes you're going to be able to do it. Sometimes you won't, but at least still just get that photo so that the planner can have it. Cause I always remember like they have been spending a lot of time, a lot of sleep, sleepless nights, you know, trying to design this event. So when it comes down to it, the only thing that they're going to have left is the actual photos. So, uh, you want to make sure that um, you're delivering and don't only shoot one one shot you know shoot a wide shot shoot close shots um, of the altar get different shots of the flowers centerpieces if they have candles or something running um the floor you know like from the back of the aisle to the front make sure you get a shot um of that you know because you just never never know you know um you know, what that might have meant to the bride or what it means to the planner. So again, planners and photographers, we definitely need to like speak, you know, because this way we understand exactly what you guys need so that we can not only execute for the bride and groom, but we also giving you everything that you need for your portfolio. Um, photographers, when you're photographing a wedding, you're not only photographing the wedding for the bride and groom, you're actually photographing it for everybody. The person that made the cake, the person that did the flowers, the person that made the, the runner, you know, the draping person, the lighting company, like everybody is dependent on your eye to create something beautiful for them so that they can show it to 
clients that are becoming, you know, um, after, after this. So I'll make sure that you're focusing on every detail. Like when you're photographing the shoes, make it look, make those photos look like they could be on the website to be sold. When you're photographing that bouquet, try to make, make that photo of that bouquet be the cover photo that the person that made it uses on their Instagram or on their website, you know? So we're all in this together and we want to make sure that we work really good um, with each other. Um, when it comes to shot lists, you know, we don't necessarily use shot lists because we kind of done it multiple times. But one thing that I, I would say is if you're starting out, you know, for planners, definitely ask the photographer, like, do you need a shot list or do you or do you already have it? And if so, like, what are just some of the shots that you want to get? Nothing have to be sent through emails because a lot of people don't want to type like all of those things out. But um, for the most part, all of the photographers will tell you like, yeah, we get the details, we get uh, each bride, each bridesmaid, you know, just to put your mind at ease. Um, one thing that I want planners to understand is when you're working with photographers, the, it's really important for you to like talk to the photographers, especially if you never worked with them before, because sometimes some planners feel like they need to hire another photographer to get like detail shots, right? One, I think that's not always a good thing, especially if the photographer that's working the wedding was already like anticipating on getting all of those shots for you, right? Another thing too is when you're photographing a wedding or a big event like this, you, the photographer that's hired by the client, wants to retain all like rights to like the the event so that when those images are being posted everybody know exactly where that came from i had a situation before where we photographed a beautiful wedding and the groom hired some other photographer that we didn't even know about it until we got there and they ended up sending pictures to a really big time publication and actually even got those photos um, featured, you know? And here we are with these awesome photos that, you know, our people on our Instagram are gonna see, but the reach that this other company had would have been tremendous for our business, you know? And I'm not gonna say if the pictures was good or bad, anything like that, that the person put out, but I know that the way that we shot it, it would have been great. So to keep that from happening and having photographers kind of butt heads because it can get to that if you know people you know it's like you're stepping on the toes like if you go if you are um going to a restaurant or you're going to a dinner party and you're a chef you don't bring your own chef to cook the food or to go in the kitchen you know so when photographing a wedding it's kind of like the, the same thing um I see a couple questions. So before I just keep talking, I'm going to uh, go through a couple questions. Right. Yeah. So team building is, is really important, right? I'm used to being a part of a team, right? No matter like how, let's say if, if you think like our photos look good or whatever at the end of the day we're working together i can't stress it enough we're working together we photographers myself and pretty much all of the other ones the same are, are pretty kind of like the same way like we're not like full of ourselves we don't think we know everything if you as a planner you have like you spent like a certain time on something the centerpiece that you just like really love and you really want to like showcase it like let us know you know, because the worst thing can happen is photographer can get used to just kind of shooting things the way that they shoot things and they miss something that you really wanted because either they just wasn't aware, they didn't notice, or they, they just didn't know that 
that was something that was like near and dear to you or to the client, you know? So communication is key. Um, we always say that like quality is key when it comes to photos, but communication is key because everybody can make like this wedding everything that everybody want and everybody benefit from if only we like communicate with each other. You know, it's not planner over here, photographer over here, you know, video person over here, like we all together because the video team is going to be creating the video. And if he know that, you know, you really want to have this showcase, maybe that's going to make the difference in the video to make it pop even more, you know, just adding those little pieces. So everybody needs to communicate. I advise all planners when you get um, the photographer, like when the, sometimes you bring the photographer to the client, sometimes the client already have them. As soon as the plan, the, um, the client, the bride, groom, let you know what photographer that they're going to go with. I would definitely say, reach out, call him, talk to him or her, you know, <clears throat> and, um, uh, and get the ball rolling. Because one thing you don't want to have happen is on a wedding day, it seemed like you guys are like this because you, you haven't had any communication with each other. Um, this is like the first time you're actually seeing each other. And sometimes us, we don't know if this is the planner, this is the assistant. We don't even know who everybody is all the time, you know, or, or vice versa. The planner see the photographer and the crew. She don't necessarily, or he don't know who is who, you know? So having that communication over the phone is definitely going to take everybody a long way. And it's going to make our clients have the best possible, you know, wedding day experience because everything is like all about that experience. I see that a new, uh, another question is coming in. Uh, it's having that eye to capture the details. Yes, you definitely have to have the eye to capture the details um, because, you know, every, again, every, everything is key, you know, when it comes to it. Uh, let me see. Let me just stroll up, look for a couple questions really quick. Um, let's see what we got. So, okay, do you? Okay, so who is the creative director when it comes to our shoots? Um, you know, do we take the lead? So, again, I study like every bride and groom, like, I really look at them. Like on the Instagrams, I want to follow them. If they don't have social media, send me a couple pictures of, of you guys together because this way I know how to build like the mood board. Uh, I'm a really big photographer into like fashion. So I love looking at Vogue, Harper's Bazaar. You know, I follow like Peter Lindbergh and like a lot of these like fashion photographers. So I'm always like approaching weddings like that. If you ever notice about, um, fashion, it always changing, you know? So when it comes to weddings, you want to kind of be in that same rim because wedding styles are always changing. The bride and groom is always going to be different again. So what I do is I, I analyze everybody and I see like what pose fit with this couple, you know, because everything don't work with everybody. So we can't approach the wedding day as if it's going to be the same as last week because it's going to be completely uh, different. I think that the bride and groom, maybe they can have a, they can let us know they want like one or two, three shots or something like that. Like they just saw some on Pinterest and they just like, you know, I really love this photo. Um, can you get us something like that? Then, you know, we'll do it. But for the most part, like 98%, we're going to handle all of that. Uh, I study photography and most other photographers studying it like nonstop. So when it comes to posing the client, posing the bride, posing the groom, I know all of the poses that I want to use or I think that's going to fit great with this particular person. And I will actually do the poses for you and you can just mirror what I'm doing. So outside of posing, you want to be able to also create like situations and allow things to happen. You know, so every part of the wedding day doesn't look so stiff and like it's a, a posy situation. You want to be able to show like the essence of movement, you know, candid moments, things like that. So you want to definitely keep that camera close to your eye 
at all times because you just never know uh, what's going to happen. But that was a great question, by the way. Let me see. We need. Yeah. Yes. I see that, uh, you know, you know, yeah, you have to deal with like some petty people sometimes. I understand that. Oh, how do you deal with difficulty pushing? Okay. So how do I deal with the the mother of the bride or anybody that's being like very difficult? All right. So what I do is let's say I want to do a photo with the bride right here and the mom or somebody is like, oh, we want this shot. Can you, oh, I think it looked better here. You know, I will like, you know, yeah, you know what? That's going to look really good. I'll, I'll get to that in a, in a few seconds. I'm going to get to that. Nine times out of 10, that is not ever going to happen. That photo that they was asking about is terrible. And if, all right, so let me tell you this. I have told, um, it was a couple of times it happened. We have like a, a maid of honor, a groomsman, somebody that just keep talking. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. I would ask them like, like, man, in a joking way, like, yo, you, you I see you got like a lot of good ideas. You ever shot a wedding before? And they're going to say no. So I would tell them, well, today, why do you want to make this your first time? Like, I don't think today is the day to, you know, come out as this wedding photographer you know and i was like just really be playing with it laughing when i'm saying it but it, it'll get the point across to them but when it comes to like you know people like just trying to tell you like what to do you know you want to you want to address them you know you want to acknowledge that they said something to you but you don't go and do it you know because you would never get to do your thing um a, a wise quote came from like jay-z i heard him say if I stop to sign every autograph somebody asks me for, I'm never going to get where I'm going. So when it comes to the wedding day, all of the people talking, you cannot listen to that. You just got to keep going and executing your game plan, right? You came up with the game plan. You know exactly what is needed to be done to make sure that the client is happy and pleased with what you deliver them because they already trust in you. They looked at your work. They didn't see different photos. They heard different testimonials and looked at your album. So they hiring you for a reason. If they wanted this other person to photograph their wedding and or if they even care so much about what they were saying, they just would have hired them and they would have never like chose you. So, you know, you want to make sure that you can hold it down, you know, and that's something that uh, football helped me out with. You know, when I was in college, I'm playing in front of like 90 some thousand people. If we plan in the national TV televised games, it's going to be a couple million. So when we are playing, I mean, when I'm photographing a wedding and it's 100 people, 200, 400 people, like that's not even like practice crowds, you know. So to help every photographer out here, this is something that I had to figure out, too. When I first started shooting, doing photo shoots or anything like that. I used to like overthink everything, right? Like, am I doing the pose right? Am I doing this right? Like I swear I'm like breaking out on like sweats and stuff because I'm like just running my brain in a circle. But what helped me out was when I realized all I need to do is just dumb it everything down. When you're like speaking to somebody over the phone, through text message or in person, you, you say something, they say something, you say something, it's just back and forth. When you're doing photo shoots, you're just speaking and they're communicating to you with what you're telling them to do, you know? So when I broke it down to that, that helped me out. When you take that to the wedding, if you're a new photographer or if you've been shooting for a while, but for some reason you still kind of feel it, that it's a little bit difficult. And even as a planner, like all of this stuff, it just could be universal for everybody. If you look at the whole totality of a wedding, like from the getting ready, like everything that has to happen, it is definitely a lot of things. What I do is I break it down piece by piece. So what I do is when I'm photographing a groom, that's the only thing I'm thinking about is the groom and the shoes and the cufflink and getting those shots in. Everything else don't matter to me. After the groom is done, now I go to the girls. And I just start that process, only focusing solely on that. And then it's a ceremony, getting everything that I need to get done. You know, the mom walking up, you got this happening. And I'm like even talking to myself in my mind as it's happening. 
I need this shot. I got this shot. Okay, you got this. Keep moving to the next thing. And you just do that. Next thing you know, it's the, you're at the reception and everybody dancing. And you got a camera reel full of like amazing photos. So break it down piece by piece. And that'll definitely help you as uh, you continue to, to move on. So um, again, when it comes to the wedding, everybody will work in as a team. It's a team. It's not the photographer, the planner. Everybody is separate. We came in different cars, but at the end of the day, we working as one today. So everybody just need to understand that and that will help everything uh, out. But uh, definitely let's see if I got any more questions out here. Any, any, any questions out here? Um, let's go to after the ceremony. After the ceremony, planners, give the photographer about three to five minutes max to get things set up for the family formals, right? Now, family formals can be pretty tricky. Sometimes what I think helps out a lot is that the bride and groom understand that if they don't want to spend a whole hour doing those get doing those family portraits, they need to let everybody know that they want to have in those portraits to not leave and go to the cocktail hour. A good amount of those people are going to already be in the wedding party. So as they like exiting the ceremony, they're going to end up together. And maybe it's another 10 or 12 people that are not a part of the wedding party that they want to have those photos with. Right. So that small group of 10 or 12 is really key to making sure that this thing is expedited. When it comes to those portraits, it should only take about 15 minutes max doing family portraits, 15 minutes. This way, the client can enjoy some cocktail hour, not necessarily go to the cocktail hour, but they can get some of the drinks that the uh, waiters and waitresses are like bringing around. They able to eat some of the food, you know, and just kind of relax and, and just talk to each other uh, about what they just experienced. Um, I think that a really good way to do it is to start out with bride and groom in the pastor and then take the pastor down. You're going to get like the photos of the of the, of the bride and groom together um, right after that. If, the, if they have kids, get that picture right away. Now, we're going to go bride and groom with the bride parents. This way, you have a photo of the bride and groom with the bride parents. If the bride don't ask to have photos only with the parents, then you might not have to do it. They, I don't think anybody ever like you know, is upset about that because you have already gotten like pictures of mom and her and dad together at the hotel um, prior to. But if not, you can add that in. The next thing you want to do immediately, you want to add the bride, the groom parents. So now you have bride and groom, you have the bride parents and you have the groom parents. That picture is really important because now you have a photo of everybody that created this picture in the middle, which is a bride and groom. If you have grandparents, that's a good time to get all of the grandparents up there. So now you're able to showcase like the lineage, you know, of the family that created this particular photo. Once that is complete, you want to take everybody down except the bride parents. And now you can add the bride siblings. Then you can add grandparent again, if they have them. And you can add aunt, uncle, whatever those other people is that they had in the photos, and they're done. So that was about three minutes, you know? So give or take five, six minutes, and you're done with that side. And now you just repeat that same thing on the groom side. Groom parents, groom siblings, grandparent, auntie, uncle, they're done. Now you can get the bridal party picture because not everybody is doing like first looks, you know? So, but it, even if they did first look, it wouldn't really matter. But you, now you're able to get a photo of the entire bridal party. And then, so we'll start with the entire bridal party and then we can break it down a little bit from there. 
you go bride and groom with the groomsmen. Then you take the bride out. Now you have a shot of only the groom with the groomsmen at the altar. And now the groomsmen are done. And now you can bring back the bride. So now you have the bride with the bridesmaids with the groom. And get a couple shots. And now you take the groom away. And now you have the bride and all of the ladies. You know, And that pretty much will get you through all of the formals that needs to be taken. And now you can spend like those next 30 minutes or so inside of the reception because everybody's at cocktail hour. We like to do have the, you know, the bride and groom do like a reveal. So the planner, you have the planner walk the couple in. You want to have the eyes closed. This way you get to get a really awesome shot of their reaction. I think that is really important for the planner to stand in the photo as well, right? So you're gonna have the bride in the middle, you're gonna have the groom on one side and the planner on the opposite side. So the planner can count down one, two, three, open the eyes and boom, you just capture all of those things happening. The plan, she's going to be in a couple shots and then we're going to put on the end so she can just, he or she can kind of fade off and you're going to get shots of the bride walking and seeing the different tables. Um, you're able to now get really awesome shots of the bride and groom in the reception without anybody in it. Uh, bride and grooms love those shots. So planners make sure that photographers are able to do that. So now you're going to spend about another 10 minutes, which gives you now about 20 minutes to now just solely focus on shooting the decor. So because of this is why planners, I don't think you necessarily need to hire other photographers to come in to shoot decor pictures and things like that, because there will be enough time if run right, that you can get all of those shots that you need for your portfolio, as well as the bride and groom gonna love to see, you know, everything that been uh, you know, ready. Um, okay, I think I got a question in here. Uh, oh, so this chat make you miss weddings. Yeah, so if, if you are a planner, you know, you need to get back into it, you know. Uh, right now, guys, you know, with all of this COVID situation happening, I know it's been hitting everybody hard because we've been having to postpone a lot of events. Uh, one thing that I, I want all you to understand guys understand is that when it comes 2021 get ready because you're gonna have so much business you're not gonna know like what to do uh, with yourself if you think about it let's say between I'm in South Florida so between West Palm Beach Miami Day and Broward County they're like 75,000 weddings per year right so that's solely for the clients that are getting married in that particular year now with this happening, there's at least another 15,000 people, brides and grooms that are moving their dates into the next year. So that's going to be a lot of activity. There's going to be a lot of uh, clients, a lot of opportunities for you guys to definitely, you know, uh, keep the business and keep everything going, you know. So don't allow this to get you down. Definitely spend a lot of time working on the business. Um, before this, we're like kind of working in the business all the time. You're going to events, you're going to dress, um, you know, cake tastings, all of these different things that um, planners do. Photographers have to kind of do some of the things sometime. But right now is a great time to work on the business. I can't stress it enough. We have made so many different changes, you know, um, moving forward that I, I just can't wait to get back out there to be able to, you know, uh, add some of the new things that, that we're going to have. Um, okay. So let me see. I got think we got some, yeah, there's definitely enough to go around for everybody. There's so many weddings like myself, like, you know, like I said, we shoot like 60 plus weddings. Uh, people may think like, wow, that's a lot of weddings, but on the grand scheme, it's like 75,000 weddings happening just in this area, you know? So, you know, we're still just like a pinch. We're not even like a drop in the bucket, you know? And people like guys like work together. Like you don't have to like, you know, not work with other people 
be thinking that they're gonna take business from you like they can't. You can't photograph or plan every event anyways. You know, when you're planning an event, I'm shooting the event, it's gonna be in one place at one time. That's it. There's thousands of other weddings happening next door, across the street, around the corner, you know. So there's definitely a lot of business for everybody. And and then, you know, you get to also travel. You get to do weddings, plan weddings in different states, different countries. And while you're over there planning something, nothing stopped where you back back home where you're from. It's still it's still moving. So there's definitely a lot of uh you know business uh out here but um you know i just want to definitely like stress it to everybody that timelines like planners and photographers like we have to be like together on those timelines definitely talk to your photographers and make sure that they are on board with the timeline because you want to make sure that the client get, have the best opportunity to get everything that he or she been dreaming of since they started it. And if you're making the timeline without the photographer like consent or even know, even know, then you could potentially put the person in a bad situation because you're giving them too much time if they feel like it's too much or you're giving them not enough time, you know? So definitely, um, make sure you know you keep that line of communication open. This way, um, everybody can can run, you know, run it the right way. Yeah. So, so yeah, about networking, networking, networking. networking. Uh, let me see if we have any other uh, question. Um, so anybody, anybody out there? Because I'm not sure how long I'm allowed to stay on here, but uh, definitely I want to get a question or two before this cuts us off. I know like on Instagram, you only get like uh, a little bit of time. Okay, time is running on everything. Yeah, so time and communication. Uh, yeah, time and communication is everything. Like, yeah, again, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Like we want to communicate with everybody, like especially the planet. Like I can't stress it. Planners, photographers, we need you. Like us two it's you and i you know with the video crew and and everybody else that is working around the timeline you know when we come into that room make sure those hair and makeup got them done you know if anything sometimes let's say if the bride was scheduled let's say we scheduled to come in the room at 12 o'clock and the bride was initially scheduled to start a hair makeup at 10 30 so that she can be done by 12. if for some reason something is not going as planned maybe one of the girls that was getting the makeup done had to get up take a call go away for a while you know any little mix-up happened just put the bride into the seat at a certain time like you have a cutoff time that if at all costs i have to have you in the seat by this time no matter what's happening so when a photographer come, we can get the shots of the bride. We don't necessarily need 500 shots of the bridesmaids. You know, when we come into the room sometime and it's like that, the bridesmaids are just like sitting around and bride is sitting in a chair. Granted, we know how to fill the time. So we'll do the, the shots of the dress and all of those things. And then we'll get the girls and start doing like cute photos with them, which is cool. But we need that bride more than we need them for that long period of time, you know, and sometimes it happens, you know, and it's not a blame on anybody or anything like that. But as we're like working on the business and understanding what, what everybody needs to make sure that we give our clients the best possible outcomes, that hair and makeup part of it is crucial to that you know um all right so great question do i allow planners to use pictures of the decor on our pages absolutely as a matter of fact when after the wedding when we break down the photos we like to break them down pretty much like the same night so we're gonna get all of the photos that we're gonna 
having a wedding gallery. And then we're going to pull out a good group of photos that we're going to use for like Instagram or any or Facebook, something like that. So within that, we're going to create like groups of picture packages for each person. So the cake company going to get it. The planner is going to get photos of the decor and definitely use them. You have to use them. I want you to use them. The reason I want you to use them, one, it's gonna make, sh it's gonna do great because you're gonna post them. People are gonna love them. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of people hitting you up about it. And then, as a photographer, when people see those photos and they love them, and you love them as well, you're gonna be more inclined to send your clients to that photographer that gave you the photos because you know that they can deliver and they got them to you at a good amount of time. So definitely you, oh man, we're going to give you all the photos. You don't have to have to worry about it. And after the wedding, so let's say the Facebook gallery, we show a, a good amount of the decor. But after we get that wedding gallery together, we'll give you access to see all of those, especially all of those decor shots. Every picture that we took of any flower, any anything that you had some, something to do with in that facet, you definitely have it and you can pick them out and uh and let me know like recently a planner um out of state contacted me asking me about like some more uh photos so we you know we just send them the gallery and they just send us which numbers they want so the way that we do our galleries is it'll be like one through let's just say a thousand and you'll get the you'll get the login link you know and you can say i want 58 85 just that and you have it so yeah we're all about making sure you get that that's that's big now let's use the pixel of more exposure yeah it's more exposure for the planner the photographer for the drape person right because the, the photos that you're going to want to use mainly are going to be like receptions so they're going to see those up lights popping if the um the what it is the drape person if you got like some really cool swoosh type of drapes you're gonna see like all of those things so that's gonna work out for like everybody so when i when we photograph weddings we photograph them for every single person that got something to do with this that cake shot is gonna be nice it's gonna be really good and we're gonna send it to the cake company because we want them to post it and you're gonna have your watermark on it you know another thing that photographers you guys should definitely do in planners, when you post photos that a photographer give you, tag them in it. Photographers, when you post photos, tag as many people in it that that you know. You know, so ask the planner. You know, can you get a list of all of the Instagram handles as well as all of the Facebook handles? This way, when you're going through and you're making that post, you can tag everybody in it. This way, if somebody randomly on a page and they're looking for who did the suit, who did the tie or, you know, the planning or something like that, they can just click on the person. And if you're doing it on Instagram, don't jumble everybody up because then you can't see them. If you go on my Instagram, Travis Dane's Photography, when you touch a picture, you're going to see everybody's name is going to be spaced out because we want people to go on their page if they like what they what they saw and it's not always about the photo you know it's about the design you know and they don't even care about they got their own photographer now they're looking for the person that did this design so to make it easier for the clients to find them you want to make sure you separate it and not just have it looking like this you know on the actual thing um feel free to reach out if you ever visit chicago yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh man, I uh, definitely want to get to Chicago for sure. So look, I want all of you guys that's on here. I want you to follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Everything is the same. Travis Daniels Photography, and like write me a message. You know, because sometimes if you just follow, you don't like kind of see who it is. So I, I want you to um, write me a message saying like, hey, you know. We was on on the live uh, with you, so this way I know exactly who I'm talking to, and we can follow each other back, and then we can start, you know, working with each other, talking, sharing, 
insights about about things because like even if we, i'm going to come and do a wedding in a certain place it's great to know a planner or know somebody there even if you're not working with them because now they can give you insight on really nice areas to probably take the bride and groom and get photos because they know the city like if you come here to miami i know a lot of places where you know you can go we know a lot of the the core people we know the cake people the djs we know everything right because this is like our area so everybody you know work together get to know each other fraternize things like that and you know it'll be great uh okay so we got another question awesome wait until after the couple no so right after the right after the wedding okay so this question is about like you know uh do you do you wait until after the couple has viewed the select photos before allowing share on social media so what we do is we want to get these photos out as fast as possible right so we necessarily can't like wait on bride and groom to select photos or anything like that because that may take a little bit of time now our turnaround time usually on wedding galleries is about seven to 15 business days to see everything within about seven to ten days is when we're going to have that facebook gallery ready now i think that i do a really good job in like selecting the photos where we're showing awesome parts of the wedding but we're not showing necessarily everything to them you know so what we do what i do is i select the photos we retouch them we make them look great and then i would either post them on my facebook as well as send them to the client or i may send them to the client first and then they can post them and then and then i can post them later it just depends on our schedule of like posting at that particular time but we for the most part sometimes we post them before the client see them but we definitely speak like hey you know what you're doing we're about to post them right now you know so you're on it you're ready and then you can just hit share and share them uh with friends and family okay um okay what else question we got Okay, so Orlando, shout out to Orlando, yeah. So we photographing some weddings up there. We actually had one coming up, uh, kind of got postponed, but yeah, we frequent Orlando a little bit, you know? I'm only like three hours away from it, so it's not like really far. So definitely would love to work with you. Um, you know, if, if the opportunity presents itself, we can get up there in no time, yeah. Um, so I think that, um i think that uh yeah i think probably all of the questions that you have. um i see that it's like counting down not counting down but it's counting up so we it's been like 53 minutes i know most of these things shut off in like an hour but um if it does i i definitely want to connect with everybody i'm so appreciative you know to have this opportunity to speak with you guys uh, and share like, you know, my thoughts and the way that we kind of go about things and how important it is for us to like work together. Like, I cannot stress it enough. Like we all need to work together. It's not like anybody get to take like all of the credit towards anything. Like we're all together, you know? I, the, the way that I can do a really awesome job is because you did an awesome job. I didn't come up with the designs of the, if you like the decor shots I shoot, I didn't come up with the design. I just took the picture, you know? So as much effort as you put into it on that side, we're gonna put it in on the picture side to make sure that it looked like that, you know? So we need you like, I tell you, when we come in those receptions and they're just full of candy, like we just like, like feel like a kid in the candy store, you know, and let's just get these shots, all of these shots, you know, and make sure that, you know, the planet is like extremely happy. The client is extremely happy because, you know, this is how they, you guys get other clients is because they're looking at the photos that people took of your work, you know, um, 
if you're going to be in a situation where you feel like you need to hire a photographer to take the core pictures because you might not necessarily like the photos so much that the photographer that you're going to be working with take, reach out to them and ask them how they feel about it. Because again, we're all together, you know, we're all working together and you don't want to step on any toes, you know, it, even for myself, like let's say if it's a, it was a planner and I don't really like how she do things, I won't bring a planner that I know into the event and have her mix or him mix up things to take the pictures the way that we want the pictures to portray you know so you know everybody want to definitely like respect each other's space respect each other and uh you know this way we all can you know move forward and and make it happen i i see that we have a couple more questions okay taking pictures at the ceremony alongside the photographer oh right so that's a great question in our contracts we have a no picture clause when it comes to family members with like professional level cameras we don't i don't care if it's like a rebel any of that it can't happen um what i tell clients and it's in the contract but i tell them about it first you invited this hundred two three hundred people to experience the moment and you hired us you paying us money to capture it there's no need for any of your cousins or uncles or anybody to take photos of you because this event is a private event when it comes to that. Now, I always tell clients too that they should probably think about having an unplugged ceremony, which means no cell phones out when the ceremony is taking place. One thing about that is, again, you are walking down the aisle this is like your big day you want people eyes glued in on you watching your every step looking at your husband to be as he's crying up there on the stage because he you just she's just looking so amazing you know so you want to not allow ipad pros ipad minis androids like all of these phones like aligning the actual frame you know, like if I was to just sit here and talk to you guys like this and you see my hands before you see my face, it's going to feel weird. Well, this is what it looks like when clients have people taking pictures with their cell phones and I'm the photographer taking the picture at them. It's like when you're looking at that picture, when the bride walking down, your eye get lost because it's just looking at all of these different things as opposed to focusing exactly on what they supposed your eye is supposed to be focused on so definitely implement those cell phones no cell phones if you see somebody with a cell phone you need to take it away from them or point to them and tell them they can't do it you know have a sign as well as somebody speaking it before the bride walk down the aisle or before the groom walk down the aisle to not bring, bring your cell phones out. This is a unplugged ceremony per bride and groom request. There are no videos to be taken. On top of that, wedding ceremonies are really sacred. You invited a certain amount of people, they invited a certain amount of people to actually experience this moment. You have people on Facebook Live, like we are right now, live streaming the wedding. And you didn't, they didn't, the client didn't invite those people to the wedding for a reason. Some, they didn't want, they don't like them enough to bring them. Others, they just couldn't have them come. So definitely take those phones, cameras away. All right. Um, my husband and I had an unplugged ceremony until the end of the ceremony. Now, when you, so that that's great, you know, having an unplugged ceremony until the end. So now that rolls into like a reception, it's more party. So now you can have fun with your cell phones, bring them out, you know, take pictures with you and all of those things is like great. But the actual ceremony would be a no-no. At my wedding, it was a no, it was a no-go for, for cell phones, you know? And if I would have saw somebody pull the cell phone out, I probably would have came off of the altar and went and took it from them on the spot, you know, because we don't want that. Um, Perfect. So guys, I see that we're winding down on like the last few seconds. Um, 
Oh, yes, 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 no pitches. Yeah. So, I, I don't, again, I don't know if this is going to kick us off or not. Uh, we got like 10 seconds. Hopefully, it don't kick us off because if you guys have any questions, it'd be great. Time to like ask some of them. Like, every, everybody in here, are you guys like planners, photographers, video? Um, what What is it that like he does? Rising rooms in here that may have any questions about, about like photo part of it uh, that I can help answer. Let me see. We still on. We still on. Let me see. So, so oh, picture. Yeah. So look at this. I had a wedding. Okay, we got a designer planner. Shout out to you guys. I, I did a wedding recently where the groom was walking down the aisle and people that was maybe like two or three seats in was like leaning over trying to shake his hand. Even worse, got tons of pictures, cell phones and cameras and all kinds of things at the wedding. And even had people like getting up and trying to get selfies with him at the altar. So imagine the groom is standing there, you having bridesmaids and groomsmen walk down and you have guests with the cell phones trying to get selfies with him while he's waiting on that moment. So cell phones are, are, are no good. Okay, so we got, okay, so we got event designers, we got planners, okay. So that, that is that is awesome. So I'm glad that a lot of you guys are mainly like, you know, decor and planners because, you know, designers, even designers, right? So let's say if you're just a designer, um, you're, you're designer only and, you know, you're not necessarily working as a planner that, that time. When you find out who that photographer is, reach out to them and let them know, hey, I'm such and such, I'm a designer, I'm designing this. We're gonna have these awesome things. Uh, we really appreciate it if you give us photos because everybody might not do it, I guess. Um, but definitely, you want to reach out to them. Um, I seen something. Okay, do you use flash or in low light setting or LED? Yeah. So, um, I want to make sure that we're ready for everything, right? So when we come to on a wedding day outside of our cameras and we have really good cameras so i think that's something if you can you want to invest in the best camera possible you know because you're going to be in some low light situations where you might want to use flash or you may not depending on what you're going for but the flashes i use are uh, pro photo um a1s so when we're doing like the family portraits we're mainly using the photo the pro photo B ones, which are like a bigger light source because we have to cover like lots of space. Um, when we're in the receptions, we're using the A ones, which is, and we use two. So we have on camera flash and off camera flash just to get different uh, lighting patterns, you know, when we need it. So definitely gonna, we're gonna travel with our own light because you just never know what situation you're gonna be in. And this way you can kind of cover yourself at on, on all sides. So having big light sources as well as smaller ones. And we carry like some LED type of lights. And I just got this new one called ICANN. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what it looked like. One sec. So I just got this guy right here. And uh, this is a, it's made, from this company called ICANN, it's probably like 200 bucks or so. But um, the cool thing about it is you can control like the color temperature. So um, no matter what situation you in, you can dial this in to be the exact color temperature of the lights around. And this way it can kind of help out with your um, photos or video. So this is something I just got. I haven't even used it yet on uh at a wedding or anything like that or on a shoot because we like quarantine or whatever so but uh i can't wait to use it you know it has like a lot of little light bulbs in here so uh definitely got some pop so i can't wait to use this because especially like when you're doing like the core shots right depending on if you're shooting the 
um, you know, a table and you need it more flat, or if you want to shoot like a, a centerpiece and you need the light to be more vertical. So this here, you know, you'll be able to use it. Definitely um, put this on like a light stand so you can raise it high, low. And uh, depending on how tall your assistant is, you know, the light stand definitely going to help out. Uh, and plus it helped them out with their arm because if you hold this up too long, yeah, I'm going to start uh, hurting. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, push it around. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yep. I saw that that um that question about lighting. Magma is that your go-to? So I have so I'm like one of these gadget type person. So you know I'll see something and I'll just buy it. So I do have like a magma system. Like I got like all of the things like the spears and the bounces, but I don't use it. The only thing I use right now is my pro photo uh a1 and i'm gonna show you that too so just in case you don't know what it looks like since we since we're in the office uh, so this right here pro photo a1 as you see it's like a really like small little thing but it has some nice pop to it so this is what i use i use either two or three of these in the reception um and yeah, these get the job done. I definitely love using these and shooting my telephoto lens when uh, clients are doing speeches, right? Um, if we have anybody out here doing video, uh, definitely when speeches are happening, you should always bring a mic stand, right? Because you could be inside a reception and the person with the mic is talking here she's talking and they're like walking all over the place and it's like super hard for you to get a nice video or a nice photo because they're just moving like way too much so by having that mic stand and putting the mic on the stand they have to stand in one position they can't move from that position right so now you're able to use different lens choices you know and get those really awesome shots so one thing that i like to do is i like to have like an assistant like in a different direction from me and i like to light the person's face in a like really cool like majestic movie type of feel and shoot really tight like on them so their face pretty much fills up like the frame you know so um yeah like so this is this is what i use right here pro photo and i never even talk about this because they're not giving me like a uh, sponsorship, but just the first free video and only free little thing they're going to get uh, from me. <laughs> yeah, so so perfect. But um, yeah, so yeah, but the magma system is, is really good. I have some friends that, that actually use it. I think that all of the light sources are going to be good. It's just the one that, that you like. I started out with the Canon lights and then I kind of went to the pro photo because the canon lights were run by like actual batteries so you needed like four batteries in the actual light and then if you want to take like rapid shots you need like a video pack that you kind of put in your pocket and that needed another like eight batteries so if for some reason your batteries go dead you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you don't have a, a backup set of batteries on you and sometimes it takes too long to take all of those batteries out so what i like about the pro photo is it's only one battery you just pop a battery in here so if i got batteries in my pocket um and this one go dead i could just pop it out and put another one in and i'm off and running in a matter of seconds as opposed to having to like fumble around with 12 more batteries that's just way too much you know so Thank God that pro photo came out, came up with that. And literally I may shoot a wedding on one battery. So the battery life is, is really good too. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, Lauren, I want to tell you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity to be a part of your platform. Um, the question has been great. The attendance been great. You've been great ever since uh, the first time we ever spoke. Um, so I'm excited, you know, and I wish you guys like much success. I can't wait to come to North Carolina 
and get some of those weddings in over there with you. And, uh, you know, you ever in South Florida, you know, let me know, let's want to know. And, uh, yeah, we all could, could link up, but, um, yeah, guys, I thank you again for time and, uh, yeah, follow us on, uh, Instagram, you know, Travis Dane's photography. Um, my Facebook is Travis Dane's photography.com. Everything is basically Travis Dane's photography. Uh, before I go, I got one question. I got to get to this one. Let me see. How do you keep kids from knocking over lights, stands? Perfect. Great question. So what I do is, being that I have assistants at the weddings, we have, they hold the lights. So um, let me, sh hold on, let me show you actually really quick. Uh, where is one at? Okay, so you have this right here, which is made by Manfrotto. Another person I'm gonna be sending a, a check to tonight. So what we do is we're able to connect this light into this. And some, like I said, sometimes we have two or three of them and we have actual, my actual assistants will be holding it and they understand exactly how to move around to make sure that the photo is great. When you have an assistant at the wedding, the assistant is like your co-pilot, right? They're your co-pilot. They can make the picture look great or terrible depending on the position of that second light. So my team, everybody understand it. They're like watching me all the time. It's almost like people are dancing, but we're not together, but we are in sync. So I'm moving around, they're moving around, making sure that they keep that same distance, distance away from the person that I'm shooting and getting those angles. Sometimes I'm giving them hand signals, right? I'm giving them hand signals this way they know exactly what type of lighting concept I'm trying to go with. Dramatic, hard light, soft light. I needed to, you know, fill the room with 10 people or if it's one person. So no light stands. We don't want anybody to trip, get hurt. We have insurance, but I don't want to have to ever use it for anything like that. And then I don't want anybody breaking my stuff because these lights so were like, almost like a thousand dollars a piece when we bought them and uh, we just don't want to keep spending like unnecessary money so assistance don't shoot weddings by yourself never shoot a wedding by yourself if you did it if you're doing it cut it out don't do it don't do it anymore keep an assistant with you yeah um, yeah so guys is are there any more questions any any questions i kind of hang around for like a minute or two you know, and answer any questions that anybody uh, may have. And um, yeah, I don't want to talk you guys ears off tonight. Let's see. Nope. All right. So again, thank you guys a lot. I'm Travis Daniels. Quality is key. And uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Follow us. Follow me. Let's write. Let's let's hit me up. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. Oh, hold on. I got one more tips for cell phone cameras. All right. So I have no tips for cell phone cameras. You know, when it comes to cell phone, my camera game is like super weak. I don't even like to take pictures with the camera phone because uh, I feel like I, I do, do such a bad job at it. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything. Uh, do I have a budget for everyone? No, I do not have a budget for everyone, right? So I, when, I, when I meet with clients, everybody, I let everybody know you know, if it come to it, that I know that I'm not, it's not a hundred percent chance that I'm going to book you. I understand that going into it. Right. And our price points start at a certain dollar amount and the wedding, your budget have to be that to, for us to, to come. Right. 
Um, I don't care about like how big the wedding is, how small, intimate it is. It doesn't matter. It's all the same job. I still have to get the getting ready photos. We still have to get everything, you know. So, um, yeah, we don't we don't try to fit everybody budget because it's just not a really good way to to run the business. And no matter what, even if you can't fit everybody budget, they don't mean they're gonna hire you anyway. So, yeah, we we don't we don't try to fit everybody's budget. We will work with you, you know. Like like let's say. Um, if, if, you know, client is like, you know, the budget is a little bit more than what we're expecting. First thing you tell them is the reason why the budget probably is not working is because you set unrealistic expectations on something that you have no idea how much it costs. Right now, let's just say they're really kind of tight on the money initially. You can maybe give them a payment plan after the wedding. You know, you can pay a certain amount of money before the wedding. And after the wedding, you can carry a balance and you have set amount of time to pay it off. Or whenever you make payments, they have to make payments at a certain dollar amount. So they can't pay you $30 here, $20 here. It's $500, $700 each time they're going to make the payment. I don't necessarily want to let the money walk away you know because of budget restriction um i look at it like you could treat me like a cell phone bill you know sure i got a lot of different bills you got car notes you got all of these different things like you buy a car for fifty thousand dollars or whatever amount of money it is you don't have to pay them all of the money right now they're okay with taking a couple thousand dollars up front and then you make payments after that so i don't mind that neither you know um clients can make a payment most clients are going to pay you before the wedding. It's only going to happen a couple of times where it may not be like that. So it's not going to be a big deal, you know? Uh, architecture, how do you come up and realize your gift and incorporating it into those shots? So I don't know where that came from, to be honest, you know? Um, so in my photos, a lot, actually, I know where it comes from. I like to tell the story of the actual day what i visually see when i when right now you walk through your house you see tons of stuff you don't only see like this so when i'm photographing a wedding i don't necessarily want to photograph everything just like super tight i want to give clients that option three quarter wide shot you know i want to include the the place that they're getting married at that's another thing too is having um, all of the different lenses so you're gonna photographers have to invest in their company in itself to be able to get every possible shot so i have lenses that are like architects mainly use it for buildings but i'm gonna use those for the buildings in the bride at the same time so um when i walk around the place and i'm scouting it out I'm looking for, if I was an architect developer, how would I want this building shot? And then I think about that first, and then I say, okay, well, I, I figured how I probably would want it. And then I think about where can I put the bride and groom to make it even more like interesting. So that's how I come up with like those type of shots. And uh, yeah, it just kind of come to me. Well, yep. Yeah, so like photojournalism type of style. So you so you want to be able to switch the styles. Like all of us like love music. Think of think of you as a me. I think of me as a photographer, like a musician, right? They have tons of different type of songs. If you're listening to rap, they might have hardcore songs. They got loving songs. They got songs about their families. They got like songs about everything. So when it comes to the photos, I want to be able to tell different stories about everything really cool mystique shots of the groom you know from the super soft sexy pretty photos of the bride you know um the big wild shot of the reception to the intimate detail of the napkin you know so i, I look at it like like that yeah but yeah so thank you guys again 
And uh, yeah, this has been fun. I definitely would love to come back on at a, another date if you ever, if you guys uh, want to uh, hear more from me, let uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll be back. So again, thank everybody for your time. Uh, I really appreciate it. All right, you guys have a good night. Stay safe, and uh, you know, many blessings on your business. Thank you.